have a follow-up now on a discussion we were having on yesterday's show that of cities and states across the country reporting major increases in total crime. And, and by the way, it of course surged after COVID, it surged after 2020, then it went down. And now we're seeing in Washington, D.C., oh. actually the Washington Post yesterday reported that there was a sharp rise over the past year in mm -hmm. Washington, D.C., with homicide shootings and armed carjackings really rattling uh, the, the capital of America. According to Metropolitan Police Department data, violent crime is up 39% this year, with homicide seeing a 28% increase and sexual abuse up 6%. Meanwhile, property crime is also seeing a major increase. Total theft up 27%, while motor vehicle theft is up 110%. But this is not just a Washington, D.C. problem. New York City saw total crime rising 22% between 2021 and 2022, while Los Angeles saw an 11% increase. And it's not just a big city problem. Birmingham, Alabama saw total crime rates increase 13 percent last year. By the way, Jacksonville having a lot of problems with a really high crime place. And the two cities uh, with the most crime this year, Monroe, Louisiana, and Bessemer, Alabama, right outside of Birmingham. Yeah, Saginaw, Michigan, and Detroit, uh, the cities with the fourth highest crime rate in the nation in 2021. Joining us now, former New York City Police Commissioner, now the executive chairman of Teneo Risk, Bill Bratton. Also, NBC News senior law enforcement analyst, Cedric Alexander. He's now former chief of police for DeKalb County, Georgia. And MSNBC contributor Mike Barnacle and former U.S. Senator Claire McCaskill here with us as well. So former prosecutor, Claire yeah. is. So, so uh, Mr. Commissioner, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, you wrote an op-ed actually recently talking about how police can make a big difference in, in pushing back on these crime waves. Talk about it. How do they do it? Well, first off, it's with uh, leadership, Joe. One of the uh, problems at the moment is that the leadership of American policing has been changing dramatically, that the vast majority of American police chiefs in the 75 largest cities in this country have turned over in the last couple of years. So we have, uh, if you will, a major change in leadership. The good news is that leadership has come up through those difficult times. They are better educated. Uh, the problems they're facing are the problems that uh, America is facing. We have a phenomenal amount of new types of crime. And we also have, a, uh, over the last several years, a, if you will, a reduction in willingness on the part of public and politicians to deal with disorder, as evidenced by the shoplifting problems we're having around the country, as evidenced by so many of the uh, behaviors that are being reported. So America's going to have to make up its mind what does it want to do in terms of dealing with this problem. It can be dealt with. We've dealt with it in the past, in the 70s, in the 90s, as recently as 2018. Safest year in the history of New York City was 2018. That was only five years ago. Fortunately, it's starting to trend down again, but the challenge is going to be to keep it going down. That's where the leadership comes in. Commissioner, as you mentioned, you don't have to go far and go into a CVS or a Duane Reed and, and see everything's locked up. Almost everything's locked up. You've got to get somebody to come help you get things because of the shoplifting uh, problem. And you're effectively asking somebody who works a register at Duane Reed to become a police officer in some way and stop people from committing crimes. What do police officers that you talk to in New York City, but also across the country, what tools do they need to help put a stop to some of this? Well, the problem is many of the tools that we had, that I had when I was a young cop in the 1970s have been taken away. New York City, for example, New York City emphasizes civil summonses for shoplifting, fear evasion, public urination. A civil summons, which the majority of people who get them don't show up, don't pay the fine, basically throw them away. Uh, we are no longer allowed to arrest for a lot of those offenses. In Why other words, not? To give a criminal summons. Uh, ask our city council, ask our legislature in Albany. This is uh, true throughout America that we have. Uh, Senator Monahan many years ago uh, took a lot of criticism for a comment he made about defining social decency down, redefining norms of behavior down. We are excusing away so much of the behavior mm -hmm. that if left unaddressed uh, becomes more criminal 
more serious over time. And that's that what we're, what we're facing right now. We are not addressing the root causes of crime, which are these minor crimes that are not being addressed. So.